Welcome to Total Reviews, the web show where we take a look at games of interest and see if they really are worth a purchase. In partnership with Games Planet, where you can purchase games like this title from an officially licensed game seller. This episode is all about WRC 6, the second WRC title made by KT Games. I previously reviewed WRC 5 and I did not give it very high marks at all, faulting it for visuals, ambient, sounds, physics, pretty much everything. But I did say that there was a fairly good base for the team to build upon and improve, so I went into WRC 6 looking for improvements, and I'm glad to say Welcome I saw many. Before getting into that, a quick rundown on the system specs. Requiring Windows 7 64-bit, an i3 processor, 4GB of RAM, an NVIDIA GTX 660 or equivalent graphics card, DirectX 11 and 20GB of hard drive space. The specs have not changed too much at all from the last iteration, except in graphics which seems to be somewhat higher. KT Games no longer refers to this title as the best value simulation, and a good thing too, otherwise I would have raised the issue on that since it still is not and I don't think it ever will be in my opinion. On that though, it is a much improved game and I did find myself playing it and not cringing constantly, which is always a good thing. Just like the last title, WRC 6 comes with all the officially licensed content you would expect. All the cars and drivers are still included from WRC, WRC 2 and Junior WRC with all respective liveries and profile pictures, of course this time from the 2016 season. Similarly, all the rally stages are included as well, so Monte Carlo, Sweden, Mexico, Wales, Australia, Finland and more are all open for you to try to master, as well as Rally China and 11 super special stages apparently recreated in 1 to 1 scale. WRC 6 also comes with online challenges similar to Dirt Rally and a refined career mode where there is no more driving school that has to be gone through. That can be picked elsewhere. The interface is just as good as the last title which is good because that was, that was a polished interface and I really did like that. Being a veteran of rally titles dating back to Sega Rally back in the 90s, I like jumping into the deep end, so I set all the assist to off and the driving and damage to simulation. It is in this mode that I, I just generally feel that I get a, a real understanding of what this title feels like without the computer adjusting things and dulling responses. So to test it out a bit, I set up my options and controls to how I preferred and jumped Hello into the introduction. Oops. And to Sardinia, where the the moment I did that, I came across the first bug of the title. The it reset all my controller settings and my difficulty settings, so I had no idea what was what. The car felt odd, the driving felt wrong, and I did really, really badly. So I had to quickly finish that off and set up my controls all over again to see what I could do. Definite bug that needs to be improved. Thankfully, after doing that I decided to use my brain a little and jump into some single stage events. This gave me a chance to see what had changed since WRC 5 in terms of graphics, sounds, physics and environment. So since this has a lot of comparison to the previous game, I'm just going to split it up and also give just some references to Dirt Rally even though that might not be too fair. First up, graphics. Much improved from the previous title. The cars are a similar high level of detail, but it seems that they have worked on textures and lighting to give it a more alive look. Dawn and Dusk again is really really nice, which is something you do not see too much of in Dirt Rally. And like Dirt Rally, the lights from the vehicles now seem to cast shadows in many places, exactly as I would expect. Trackside objects have been improved for certain, and whilst I like that in WRC 5, it feels so much better in WRC 6. I don't know what it is, it may just be some sort of placebo effect with everything just looking a little bit more polished. Everything just looks just that little bit more polished. Weather effects are also improved, but again, it seems like rain and snow, they don't actually fall on the car. So, it, I mean, it looked like you were getting raindrops on the car, but it didn't look like the raindrops were actually coming from the sky. It just looked like a texture that was being applied. And as for snow, there, there really wasn't anything. It's snowing and there's, there's absolutely nothing falling on the car. So wipers are useless there. 
Uh, night racing is not brilliant either, but it has been improved. I think it's mainly to do with the, the lighting. I think the night lighting just needs improvement, so that's what's bringing the night racing down. Improve that and I think you'd have decent night racing. And I did quite like the mist patches I drove through on the Welsh coast. That being said, it's still behind in the detailing over Dirt Rally, but that's okay, you know. Sounds are also improved over the previous iteration. Exhaust pops were the strength in WRC5, but in 6, there is plenty more to enjoy with quite decent external sounds and ambient sounds, including this helicopter, which I don't know whether you'll hear in this review, but there's definitely helicopters uh, buzzing about everywhere, and you can hear the rotors actually turning and the blades. Very nice noises. It's it is quite nice. Uh, the whole the whole ambience is quite fun. It just brings an extra an extra dimension to the to the actual game. Internal sounds, however, are still rather weak, but far better than they were. Work is still required, and again, it's not really on par with Dirt Rally, but that's okay. These lot are they're improving. They are improving. Physics and force feedback. Now I'm not even going to bother comparing this to Dirt Rally because it's two different leagues, but the physics are far, far better than the previous game. The car feels like it's sliding better, the surface changes are noticed, and the grip levels have been much improved to give a more on the edge feeling. Force feedback is better too, and I was able to determine a fair amount of what was happening as I drove. It's still pretty heavy, but at least it didn't feel dull and lifeless. Still plenty of room for improvement though, but so far what I'm seeing across the board is progress. Snow physics are still really poor, and no matter what it just felt like driving on ice and there was really no feel there. Gravel and tarmac though, pretty well done. Lastly, content. Now this is where it comes down to what you like. If you want cars from many generations but limited locations, it's Dirt Rally. If you want the current vehicles and all the current locations, then WRC6 WRC wins without a question. The amount of content in the title is enough to enjoy for quite a while, and with a career mode that starts you off in the junior WRC, and that has teams that have their own morale and their own targets, it will keep you busy for quite a while. Final downsides? Well, going into a replay still resets your camera for the next event. The cars still feel rather arcade-like, but since this is no longer advertising itself as a simulation, I can let that slide. See what I did there? No? Alright. I suppose that joke wasn't as good as... Uh, actually, it wasn't as good as any joke. And what was the joke that I had in the last WRC review? Um, something about doing something in due course or something? I don't know. Anyway, moving on from that. I'm not a comedian. Let's move. But the downside. The big downside. The co-driver. Oh my gosh, that co-driver. <sighs> Still absolute rubbish, and it sounds like disjointed blabbering. There's been no improvements there. Absolutely zero improvements. It needs to improve. KT Games, whoever's watching this, it needs to improve. There is no way you can have a rally title with a co-driver like that. You've got to fix that. However, overall, not a bad game. Not a bad game at all. Clearly better than WRC5 in many ways with various improvements all across the board. It is still clearly aimed at the casual market but works fairly decently with a wheel too. So, for those of you with wheels, you might want to give it some thought. This is not a rival to Dirt Rally, nor will it ever be. So if you want a more realistic experience, it's not the title for you. But if you want some Simcade fun, it's a title to potentially get. And do check out the link in the description box below where you can pick up WRC 6 from Games Planet. Rating up 12 points from WRC 5, I give this a 72 out of 100, partly due to the fixes and improvements and partly due to the fact that it does not sell itself as a simulator anymore. There is still a long way to go, but KT Games are definitely on the right track. Bring on WRC 7. <laughs>